every day is Thanksgiving in India. I'll explain more about that here on Global Connections with our esteemed guest, Rupmati Kandakar, who joins us from New York, where she is an Indian person associated with the United Nations. Rupmati, welcome to the show. Aloha, Jay, and uh, always a pleasure and honor to join you, especially in this uh, Thanksgiving and when the festivities are beginning. So uh, joyful time to join you. So, uh, the same yes. here. So, you know, sometimes we assume American holidays are celebrated around the world. That's kind of myopic because it's not true. Uh, in some countries, however, there is a trend towards celebrating Western holidays and American holidays. Um, Thanksgiving in some countries, but it's not commonly celebrated in India. It's observed, however, in the state of Goa, uh, and we're going to show you where that is, under a different name, popularly known as uh, Ladinha or Ladin. Uh, Ladin literally means litany to the Virgin Mary, uh, which you know reveals the Christian uh, origin of the holiday in Goa. Um, so let's talk about Goa. Let's talk about the rest of India, because India, in a word, is so super diverse. It's diverse in holidays. It's diverse in customs and cultures and languages, the whole thing. And so you can speak to that, Rupmati. I know you can. Tell us about <laughs> Thanksgiving in India. Yes, Jay. Of course, of course. Uh, India is like a, a celebration. It's synonymous with celebration and the diversity that so many cultures, so many uh, religions, it's a melting pot, exactly like America. It's uh, a mirror image of America. And uh, being a democracy, there is a freedom of religion, freedom of expression. So uh, you're free to practice what you feel like. And um, the Thanksgiving, uh, when we look at it in the American perspective, it was celebrated as a harvest festival. You, he, they celebrated a corn harvest in 1621, uh, a difficult corn harvest. So uh, we have similar uh, uh, um, festivals, like uh, we have uh, Baisaki in Punjab and uh, Holi and uh, wait, wait, Onam. Let's see, where, let's see where Punjab is. See, Punjab in the north of India. Okay, we have a map. That is Basant right uh, now. Means they celebrate springtime, they celebrate the harvest, they have swings, they have colorful clothes, dance, music, food, exactly the same way that we begin festivities in America. So uh, you have uh, uh, Basant in uh, Baisaki in uh, Punjab, you have Onam in the south of India, you have Holi in Maharashtra, Gujarat. So these, these festivals are basically uh, celebrating your harvest. So if did you, you talk did you in the say terms 1621? of. I thought you said 1621. Yes, 1621. First, uh, I, when the pilgrims came to climb up. Yeah, they were, I think yeah. 16, 16, 10 or 1621. 20. Yeah, okay, 16, now 1621 was before the English ever came to India, right? It yeah. Was, it yeah. was only the Indians. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Indians over there and the Indians over here. So now so, this, is, uh, this is the one in this is the one in Punjab. Yes, Punjab is uh, Basan, uh, Baisaki. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jay, uh, uh, because we are countries which depend on the weather and the harvest, we celebrate it because it is uh, you are thanking nature for giving abundance of harvest, and that is exactly the spirit of Thanksgiving, where you express gratitude for the family, for the friends, and for the uh, belongings and, uh, you know, what you get from uh, towards yourself. So that basic tenet of Thanksgiving is celebrated all the time, everywhere in uh, India. And if you see the number of festivals that uh, India has, it's uh, humongous <laughs> because uh, out of 365 days, we have, I think, around 300 days where we have something which is celebrated in a day. So uh, spring, sun, moon, stars, uh, you, you name it, we have it. And uh, everything, <laughs> everything revolves around a meal, like how in Thanksgiving, the turkey becomes the center. In India, in different, different festivals, you have milk sometimes is the uh, center. You have puran poli, which is a sweet flatbread, which is uh, the center of the, uh, the table. And everywhere, 
like in Thanksgiving in America, a home cooked meal is what satisfies the palate of uh, uh, the people and family is given importance. So J these um, uh, what well, locus uh, focus of uh, the festivals is the same in both the countries. And now coming to the very concept of Thanksgiving because America has the biggest Indian diaspora. <laughs> you have cousins in America who uh -huh. celebrate Thanksgiving. So why not? We should also celebrate it in India. So that's the kind of uh, give and take that happens because Halloween is picking up in a big way in India. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and outsourcing. You have uh, the call centers, which are in India. So they work according to the uh, American uh, timetable. So you have Thanksgiving, you have Halloween holidays. So this kind of culture which you absorb and take into your own uh, net is the kind of uh, uh, character that India has. So we are having Thanksgiving celebrated in uh, re uh, luxury hotels. You have uh, Thanksgiving banquets. Uh, maybe turkey is not cooked at home, but you will have a, uh, a seven-star luxury hotel celebrating a, a traditional turkey and you'll have many people take us for that. So, um, you know, it's an act of expressing all that exactly the way it's celebrated in America, in India. So they, they're making an effort <laughs> to absorb it and you never know. You can have Indian cuisines put into Thanksgiving in a couple of in a few years. So <laughs> that's going to happen. Adaptation. Well, what about the adaptation? So you have um, people from India in in the U.S. It's a large immigrant group, and in yes. fact, I wouldn't even call them immigrant anymore. They're as American as anyone else in its second, third generation. So <clears throat> do they do they carry with them uh, the notion of Thanksgiving in India? when they celebrate Thanksgiving in the U.S.? Yes, they do. You see, uh, when uh, Thanksgiving is like the beginning of the holidays, isn't it? Travel comes into action. You have a family which comes together and you have uh, gratitude which is expressed. So uh, this kind of things, uh, when you have distant family also living in India, you will call up, you will see other people uh, thanking their family. You have distant family in India, you will say, hello, uh, how are you? And uh, this Thanksgiving over here and, uh, you know, you give a courtesy call. So uh, like we go back to the concept of being a global village, Jay. So <laughs> we are all together in this and uh, community family becomes very important in these holidays. So uh, even if you're alone, you kind of celebrate with the community. So that kind of togetherness that these holidays bring is far important than uh, you know, the manner in which we celebrate, you know, so that that way. A couple of things I want to ask you about, you know, I, I mean, in my very brief reading on this, I concluded that uh, whatever you call it in India, it is Thanksgiving is 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 you it's ubiquitous. In other words, all the holidays we can think of, all the ones you were naming. Um, is thanking the heavens and the stars and the deity, whatever, um, for something, right? So Thanksgiving, is, and what I said in the title to the episode was, in India, Thanksgiving is all year round because all of these holidays could be at any time. They don't necessarily have to, have to be at the end of November. Um, they could be any time, but they're the common denominator between all these holidays we talked about uh, that you mentioned, it's, 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 it's thanks for something. Yes. Right. Correct. Correct. Point and, on Jay point on absolutely okay. point. So the other, the other thing you mentioned, I want to pursue a little bit is, uh, is family because, um, you know, in this country, my observation over the past few years, I'm getting very observant of such things. Family has deteriorated, and you know, the nuclear family, so to speak, it goes in in every direction you can think of, and they may or may not make that call on Thanksgiving. They or may not see each other from month to month and year to year. Our our uh, filmmaking and our our art seems to suggest that a lot of families are broken in this country. I mean, it it, it makes for a good movie, but it, it's a sad story, and I wonder, you know. 
uh, my guess is that in India, families are really tight. You would be tight with your parents and your grandparents. You'd be yes. tight with your kids and your siblings and your uncles and aunts. Um, it's an Asian thing, you know, but it's a, it's universal too. But, but I wonder if you could talk about the notion and the practice of family in India, and especially uh, at the time of a holiday. CJ, in India, uh, the, the, the family, it's, uh, uh, we are a very populated country. Asia itself is very populated. You all live together. So the distance between you and your parents, you and your family is not as distant as it might be over here. And uh, so many traditions depend on uh, generation to generation. It is uh, first generation carrying to third generation, first generation giving to your own children. So this kind of intertwining of the uh, religious festivities makes it a point that you call upon, you have a lot of uh, call upon your family. So you have a lot of uh, um, festivals which celebrate the bond between a brother and a sister. So you need to go and physically be there with your sister or your brother and tie a, a thread of uh, protection around them. So that kind of thing that which makes you want to, uh, makes you, directs you to go and meet that person, these, these bonds, even though you are a nuclear family, even though you stay apart, you will tend to come together for these moments. And that when you have so many festivals in a year, <laughs> you tend to meet each other on a, a more or a less a daily basis. Let's say 306 days are festivals, uh, Jay, out of 365. So you have oh, weekends is that coming. right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have weekends coming in. And, uh, and one more thing is that, uh, Jay, in India, you tend to celebrate other religious festivals also. There is not, uh, there is no restriction that you have to be celebrating only uh, Hindu festivals or only Muslim festivals or only um, uh, Sikh festivals. You can just intermingle. And even if your friend is of another religion, you can go, go and join in the festivities. So it's kind of a whoever wants to join in, come on, uh, let's go kind of a situation in India. That's so great. family unit, if friends are being uh, uh, picked up so uh, in, intimately, imagine the kind of attraction that family has to have during festivities. So you call upon your parents for lunches, you, you, they stay with you. You know, this all uh, is a very entangled uh, process. And uh, in America, we see that uh, there is a distance because of the mobility for employment. Uh, the income, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Seeking uh, opportunities that we go for, that causes the distance. And in uh, India, you have uh, uh, family businesses which are run from father to son. To, so the son kind of stays if he is in the same business as the father or if he is staying in the same house that his father owns. But if he is going for income seeking opportunity, he will have to go to another place. So, you know, it's uh, it's one step away from America, like that. Mm. So that's the situation. But family, I mean, even Jay, even if it's uh, even if you're alone in the U.S., you come to community. Your community becomes your family. So that is important, Jay. Is that important in India? Very much, very much. I had spoken to you about this. You remember the langars that there is a Punjabi community which organizes langars. I mean, if you don't have anything, you can go to this uh, Gurudwara temple of worship and you will be provided meals, you will be provided shelter. They will not uh, distance. That is where community pay, plays a big role. If there's an earthquake, you have the Rashtra Seva Sang coming in. You have, uh, uh, that's the RSS, that's the ruling BJP-led uh, social organization. You have uh, the Punjab, uh, Punjabis who come in with their langars and their uh, support, the Maharashtrians, the NCC. There are so many organizations which play the role of community building, Jay. So, uh, and, um, you know, uh, festivals were taken to be a community building exercise by Lokmanya Tilak in the independence uh, movement. He said, celebrate it, come together, unite as a, unite as a community, 
so that we develop the feeling of unity and togetherness to fight against colonization. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. So he celebrated the Ganpati festival, which is a, a, a celebrated with great enthusiasm in my state, in Maharashtra. So Ganpati festival is extravagant. So that you just, the, the entire city comes onto the streets, they dance, they have a good time, they have food, they have family, you visit friends, you visit family. That is the extravagance and you feel like you are together. So How long does it last, Mani? 10 days, 10 days. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 10 days of, <laughs> it's a disco like thing on the streets in Maharashtra. Even Diwali is 10 days. So um, I know you, you, we've talked about this before. You come from Pune, um, yes. which is in that particular state. What's life like in Pune? Uh, what is special about Pune and how does uh, Thanksgiving figure in Pune? Uh, Pune is amazing. It's my heart. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a pension. It's, I told you it's a pensioners town, they used to call it. It was the British headquarters. But it's got a taste of the Maharashtrian culture which you see, uh, you have the Ganpati festival, which is celebrated. It's a, a, it's a world-class celebration, Jay. I mean, you have people from every country which come to watch this because it's nothing like you can expect, nothing you can ever see. There is so much noise and so much of dance and so much of devotion, which goes through the uh, elephant god uh, for 10 whole days. I mean, nobody sleeps. Uh, for 10 whole well, this days. Is a, this is a good place to go as a tourist then. You, you may want to tra travel absolutely. to Pune and, and be a tourist and participate in 10 days of revelry. And what a revelry. good time is that? Yeah. Yeah, revelry. I mean, it's not one parade. It's not uh, one day. It's 10 days of madness, Jay. And <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, every, every city in India has got one thing, which is something like this, like Dasera. In Diwali is celebrated with grandeur in the city of Mysore, South India. They have uh, and all these festivals today. It's Thanksgiving or it's expressing gratitude to the gods for giving uh, us whatever we have. So every festival carries the theme of Thanksgiving. So a traditional Thanksgiving in every Indian festival is what. Uh, you've been talking about. So <laughs> that's what uh, runs through all these uh, festivals. So, so one of the common denominators would be that it's, it's every festival gives thanks. Another common denominator, I'm guessing here, you have to tell me, tell me if I'm right, uh, is you're talking about um, food, you're talking about candles, wine, talking about flowers, um, you're talking about decoration, and uh, talking about a big meal of some kind. So t t talk to us about the, you know, the accoutrements that you find throughout India on these various festivals, these Thanksgiving type of festivals. Uh, what's, what's the food like? What's, what, are the, uh, what are the things that you celebrate with? Yes, Jay. So uh, food always is the central part of every celebration and of every festival. And home-cooked meals are uh, one of the key ingredients of these festivals. So uh, basically, firstly, first, it is the harvest that happens close to the uh, festival. So you have uh, um, corn, corn uh, flatbread and uh, spinach, which is grown in the Punjab festival, like I told you, Baisaki. Uh, in uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, it is the fresh vegetables that come in that is made into a, a, a vegetable curry and uh, flatbread and rice, you know, you have these things which come on the pallet from the uh, fields. So when you see this, and when you feel that there has been a good harvest, you kind of tend to uh, unknowingly express the gratitude towards that food. And when your family surrounds your table, you feel that it is complete, isn't it? So uh, you have delicacies and you, a lot of sweets are prepared in Indian festivals today. You have a variety of sweets uh, which uh, <laughs> are pure sugar <laughs> and they are prepared in the most traditional way. You have coconuts, uh, all, all the fresh ingredients that come in. Coconut, you have jaggery, which is a good substitute for sugar, which is used a lot in Indian uh, sweets. 
you have a lot of um, what is that uh, jellies which you like uh, so uh, it's a, a wide range of uh, sweets that come in and uh, there's a tradition in india that you always uh, keep the mouth sweet so that sweet things happen to you so that's what uh, gives the importance of sweets in uh, and uh, a large portion of india is a uh, vegetarian so the non veg turkey is a little bit of a restricted uh, it's not on the palate mostly you go for a vegetarian palate in the festivals but uh, the non veg palate is of course for uh, sections of the cosmopolitan crowd but uh, mainly it's vegetarian and uh, food and uh, that well, what, what about the traditional american table is there uh, turkey is there sweet potatoes uh, is there cranberry cranberry sauce uh, I, I, I don't know a few other things i'm sure we'll all find out in the american thanksgiving but do you see that those foods in india that's what i'm telling you turkey and you know, because of the commercialization of uh, thanksgiving you have the luxury uh, chain of hotels celebrating with a traditional turkey you will have we have buffets in india you know the buffet system you have an uh, entire um, uh, dinner or lunch set up a brunch set up and during thanksgiving particularly during thanksgiving they keep place a big turkey which you can go and have so um, this like the same way see valentines day is not traditional in india or <laughs> on new year's eve is not traditional in india but it is caught on a, on such a large scale that uh, just because of the commercialization Yeah. So now this is coming in as um, the next step from Halloween. Halloween started because the kids are enjoying it. The children are enjoying Halloween in uh, India. So yeah. if the kids enjoy, the parents enjoy. So and they have uh, pumpkins and costumes <laughs> and all that. They are doing it. They are doing it big time. We do have pumpkins uh, in India, the big <laughs> ones. Uh, they're known as bopla. <laughs> so do people go out to restaurants for these holidays or? Yes. Or does it stay home? Is it both? Or what what happens? See, uh, turkey uh, usually I don't think it's on the traditional Indian uh, um, uh, cooking uh, this, but uh, going to restaurants is now uh, much convenient, isn't it? You call, like you said, we have nuclear families. You call your uh, uh, family and you say, "Let's meet up at this place." and let's have a nice dinner and then they can take care of the dishes <laughs> so that's why <laughs> that's the division of labor <laughs> <laughs> exactly if you can afford it let's go for it so, so i want to ask you about some of the others that uh, that i found in my reading <clears throat> so there's um let's see there's onam there's uh, mm. baisakhi um, baisakhi there's a uh, diwali or diwali uh these are other other holidays in various places are, around the country and and those places could be thousands of miles apart um so uh, are they all in the fall are they all harvest um, holidays or are they spread around the year and are they all i i guess they're all giving thanks for one thing or another but they must differ in some ways because they're so far apart can you talk about you know the differences and and how how much uh, similarity they bear and how much similarity do they bear to thanksgiving itself uh right jay yeah, or diwali onam and baisakhi like you said are all um, celebrating uh, festivals but we have two harvest times in india one is the spring harvest one is the winter harvest that's why we have this spread across the year so uh, and the distance that you talk of it's because uh, one um, uh, harvest in the northern part is different from the southern uh, part of india so uh, you have this kind of uh, um, different timings uh, but the main tenet of the thing of the festival remains the same to celebrate harvest and to celebrate uh, togetherness and family So Diwali, like I told you, it's a ten-day festivity, which celebrates another another god coming from uh, Ayodhya. That's a that's a different story altogether. You you express gratitude to the ideal version of man. That's a uh, I'll I'll explain it to you <laughs> a little later. Uh, 
Okay. But uh, uh, the harvest, purely harvest festivals, are uh, the Baisaki, the Onam, the uh, Holy Holy uh, Springtime. Uh, Jay, you know the Tomatino festival in Spain, where they they play with tomatoes, La Tomatino. Uh, so uh, Holi is a festival in uh, uh, India where you play with colors and water. You celebrate spring with colors and water. You are rubbing color into uh, people's face, and your family gets together, and you have sweet uh, uh, delicacies. But uh, Holi is one of the biggest festivals in India of Lord Krishna. You will see that it's, um, I, I mean, I tell it for every festival and it's true. It's, <laughs> it's a crazy enthusiastic festival where you are just playing like a child with color. Ah, what wonderful. Yeah, well. And, and the entire country plays with you, not one uh family or one community, the entire country is playing. You'll be walking on the street and somebody can throw a balloon on you and say, it's holy, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> it's like the, like the, the, uh, the cows, huh? the sacred yes. cows. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. And so these things, it, it, it sounds like, just a thought now, and I'm really interested in, in uh, your thought on this. It sounds like some of these elements of the holidays happen between the holidays. For example, the family aspect um, and the colors and the gatherings and the, the you know the, the the festival nature of gathering, um, the, the the notion of thanking people and being out in the street with a community of people in your city or neighborhood. Um, it, it sounds to me like this actually defines life in India in many places between the holidays. So you can almost say that India is one great big holiday. <laughs> Could you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would most definitely, undoubtedly, and directly say that India is just one big holiday. You know, Diwali was declared as one, uh, first time it was declared as a public holiday in New York. So uh, it's, it was declared one day. In India, it is like 10 days, 15 <laughs> days holiday for school, 15, uh, 20 days holiday for Christmas. We have Christmas vacations in India, which, which, are, which are 20 days vacation day. We have summer vacations for two and a half months. <laughs> so oh, okay. you just need a small excuse in the way that <laughs> have a holiday in India. <laughs> well, you, you have a foot in, in each camp. <clears throat> you live in the U.S., uh, you know what happens here, and um, and you know the you know the focus and the 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 essence of our celebrations of various holidays, and then you you know you know what happens in India, and I wonder this, this is a hard question. Are you ready for a hard question, buddy? Uh, yes. What, what can the U.S. learn from India about holidays, about Thanksgiving? about being thankful, about celebrating with family and community. You know, we have so many issues in this country about divisiveness and hostility and hatred and bigotry and what have you. Um, what can we learn from India uh, as expressed through these Indian holidays? See, the United States is as good as home. So that's why you have an Indian diaspora which has settled in and is thriving in the United States. There is not much of a difference between the U United States uh, society and the Indian society. Correct, Jay? So you have a kind of uh, feel good, uh, feel at home uh, condition in America. So that's why the Indians <laughs> have felt more than comfortable to settle in and uh, uh, progress with America. So uh, when we draw in uh, conclusions and uh, lessons from each other, we can say that we, we both are at the uh, helm of keeping uh, democracy alive, isn't it? To keep uh, uh, your expression of um, uh, uh, your freedom of expression uh, thriving and you can uh, keep your religious uh, uh, affiliations along with your secular expressions to celebrate every and each festival. So you have a commercialization of festivals and you have adaptation of festivals into your traditional uh, 
uh, uh, you know, your uh, traditional framework. And so when you see that each and everything and life itself is a celebration, isn't it? <laughs> you should celebrate each and every moment in life. And that's the way how you uh, gather moments and make a life out of it. And if there are celebrations in between, uh, all the more better. So <laughs> you have to have uh, uh, this lovely uh, uh, accompaniments of uh, family, of food, of uh, tradition, of love, of community. And, you know, that's how we can make it a wonderful life. And uh, life is really beautiful. And uh, ups and downs in life are common uh, place, isn't it? Uh, who doesn't have uh, thorns in their life? So that's part and parcel. But to celebrate the good moments is far better than uh, crying over a spilt milk and <laughs> uh, on the drawbacks of uh, life, isn't it? Yes. So, oh, yes. So um, all this makes me uh, remember that uh, it was only six months ago or so that you were back in India. And here yeah. we are at Thanksgiving time and you're here in the United States. Uh, did you consider going back again? Did you consider, uh, you know, having um, the celebrations uh, this time of year in India instead of the U.S.? Ah, I can join in any time and join any festivity. Over there. It's a constant party over there. So it's uh, absolutely okay. But I'm very, very grateful to, uh, uh, to the life that we have here in the U.S. I'm grateful for your friendship, for the association that I have with Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, it's uh, always... Uh, um, a lovely thing to uh, express this uh, emotion because we are bound together by uh, connection and uh, lots of love, Jay. So <laughs> it's lovely to be, I don't miss, it's a home uh, at, at every point. Yes. Home oh, is yes. And, and, and at the same time, I, I'm sorry to say that I have actually never met you in person. <laughs> <laughs> After all we these will, years, <laughs> yes, we will, so, we will, we will. So if there's a rumor that you're coming out to Hawaii for Thanksgiving this week, is that true? <laughs> I will come. Most definitely, I will come. And definitely. Okay. Well, Rumani, I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I, I really appreciate your your thoughts on this, and uh, you know the cultural points you raise, and and the um, you know what do I call it the international vision that you have in terms of bringing people together. And yes, we, we can learn from India. We can learn from family and celebration and holiday. Thank you very much for coming on our show. Thank you so much, Jay. And I'm really grateful for our friendship. Thank you so, so very much. Well, we'll meet again soon. We'll think of something Absolutely. else to cover. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Happy Thank Thanksgiving, you. Rupati. For you too, Jay. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, and enjoy the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.